Originally unveiled in 2017, the Tesla semi-truck has promised to disrupt the trucking industry with lower costs and autonomous capabilities. The truck hasn't come without some doubts though, specifically around how the weight of a potential 1 megawatt hour battery may limit the towing capabilities, as many countries have law restricting the total weight of the semi-trucks. However, this video is focused on understanding how Tesla has managed to make such a giant leap towards increasing the efficiency of these vehicles. To put this into perspective, a current diesel semi-truck will achieve around 6.5 miles per gallon, which if using diesel that stores around 10 kilowatt hours of energy per litre, means it uses around 5.8 kilowatt hours per mile. The Tesla semi-truck, on the other hand, is set to use less than 2 kilowatt hours per mile. And in my opinion, I expect it could be a fair amount lower than this when looking at all the energy saving measures that are in place. The obvious efficiency gain is that an electric powertrain is much more efficient than a diesel engine. This is because a lithium ion battery pack has a discharge efficiency generally over 95% and the electric motors generally have efficiencies of over 90% which is much higher than diesel engines, which are normally around 30% efficient. However, this is just the start of the efficiency gains for the Tesla semi-truck, and I think at least one of these ways used to increase the efficiency will surprise you. So the first one may come as no surprise, it's drag. Drag is the force that pushes back on an object travelling through a fluid, such as the air around us. It increases quickly as an object increases in speed, and generally makes up a large portion of the force a vehicle has to overcome, normally over 50% at highway speeds. The drag comes mainly from pressure differences in the airflow that suck the vehicle back, and from friction between the vehicle and the air itself. The extent to which a vehicle is affected by this is characterised by the drag coefficient, and the Tesla semi-truck has a drag coefficient of only 0.36, which is about half of most diesel trucks. This value is equal to the Bugatti Veyron, though the semi-truck has a much larger frontal area, so the overall drag force is still considerably larger. The drag coefficient in this is lower for a few reasons. The front of the semi-truck has a slope which prevents pressure building up, like on more conventional trucks. Also there's no grill which helps eliminate friction drag as air passes through the radiator. The Tesla semi-truck also has small camera wing mirrors, covered wheels, flaps that prevent gaps between the truck and trailer, and a smooth undercarriage, which all contribute to lower drag. For more detail about this, check out the video linked in the description. The next technique plays on reducing drag again, but this time by using other trucks to form a platoon. This is nothing new, and is commonly seen on highways or motorways even by manually driven trucks. However, with autonomous capabilities, this can be taken to a whole new level. What is crazy here, is that it's not just the trucks behind that benefit, but because the second truck prevents low pressure building up behind the first truck, even the lead vehicle benefits. A study linked in the description found that trucks at the front save about 10% of the total energy use. The middle ones save the most at about 17%, and the ones at the back save 13%. Now to move away from drag for a change. Let's look at the motors. Losses in motors, and therefore inefficiencies, come mainly from friction, electrical heating, and other losses relating to the formation and movement of magnetic fields. In the Tesla semi-truck, there are four independent motors. This means that when less power is required, such as when cruising on the motorway, they may not all have to be active. So, if during a cruise only two of these smaller motors are active, there will be much less friction than using two larger motors. Motors running at low power are also generally less efficient, such as a larger motor only running at 25% of the power during cruise. This is because of the power factor, which is a ratio of real power that is actually doing work and the apparent power which is seen at the load, which in this case is the motor. Think of this like a glass of beer. The apparent power is the total amount in our glass, and the real power is the beer. The head of the beer represents power used to generate magnetic fields in the motor. It is important to have, but too much of it isn't good. Whereas the beer is the power actually used to spin the motor. When the motor isn't working very hard, or running at low power, it is like only having half of a pint, but with the same amount of head as a full pint. 
This means that a lot of the overall apparent power and power used by the battery is purely there just to create the magnetic fields and doesn't do any useful work. This is bad and inefficient. Instead, we want a motor working harder with a better balance of body and head. And if that wasn't enough, even at full power, having four motors is still more efficient than one larger one because of those electrical heating losses, also known as copper losses. So let's say we want 100 kilowatts of power. If we assume the motors all run at 1000 volts, this means the current would be 100 amps for the big motor or 25 amps for the smaller ones because power equals current times voltage. Now, if we look at the equation for copper losses, which is I squared R, assuming a resistance of 0.5 ohms, the largest motor would have losses of 5000 watts, whereas the smaller motors would have combined losses of only 1250 watts. This calculation is slightly different in practice as these motors have three phases, but the same theory applies. Also, the resistance is unlikely to be the same, but the main effect here comes from the current because it's squared. And finally, I read about this one in an article linked in the description, and I'd never thought about it before. On a conventional truck, around 50 kilowatts of power is drawn as parasitic power consumption, which relates to air conditioning, coolant pumps, cooling fans, and much more. Because all of these must be electrified in the Tesla semi-truck, they can also be more accurately controlled and optimized. This therefore reduces the parasitic power consumption down to only 15 kilowatts. So it's clear the Tesla semi-truck has some insane efficiency improvements, and I can't wait to see them on the roads near me. Personally, I think given all these improvements, the Tesla semi-truck could manage 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile or less. As well as the efficiency improvements, these trucks should have much lower maintenance, with Elon Musk stating that these will be built to last a million miles before needing maintenance. A claim made even more interesting with the recent million mile battery developments, which I explained in an earlier video. So make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel as we just hit 13 subscribers and are growing fast. And leave a comment if there's anything you think I should do a video on in the area of sustainable engineering, technology and business. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next video.